Hello, that's me again. Today is June 24th and um, you all know why I'm here because actually, to be frank with you, I didn't want to do it. I am one of those guys who uh, observes and waits for the events to take their own course, but because I've been assaulted basically by calls and uh, requests and uh, emails asking to explain some things. So that will be a relatively short uh, explanation of things which I know. And keep in mind, I do not know all of it. Far from it. We don't know the whole story behind it. But I will start with a few things to consider. And one of the things which I want to start, and that, that will be the only actually uh, 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 picture in my presentation today, is Mr. Medvedev, the deputy uh, 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 of the uh, Russia Security Council, speaking today. And he commented on the issue of the, obviously, Wagner's and Prigozhin, criminal Prigozhin's uh, uh, actions in terms of mutiny and try to actually overthrow the government. And here it is. While speaking about the <coughs> whole situation, he uh, and I uh, translated for you. With considering the very high level of this uh, preparation for this scheme, about the high level of professional cohesion, of the uh, actions, of the very high level of the control of the movement of the Wagner troops, you can say about the presence of the highly, uh, uh, um, highly developed uh, military uh, conception and uh, uh, participation in this mutiny of people who uh, before that have been serving in the elite, uh, uh, elite uh, units of the armed forces of Ukraine and highly likely in, uh, uh, in, uh, international foreign specialist speaks about their uh, uh, desire and the plan to overthrow the legitimate government of the Russian Federation. And he obviously added, which uh, it has been stated all uh, the time, that for those people who do not uh, maintain their informational hygiene and who continue to read all kinds of garbage, um, Telegram channel and channels and all those uh, uh, incompetent media primarily. Obviously, the fact uh, of the uh, Prigozhin having the connections with the uh, foreign, uh, so to speak, services is now pretty well established, actually, and I will explain why. And Medvedev basically speaks about it, about the international participation in that, and that essentially it uh, was... As I spoke today with my dear friends in Russia, and we did even podcast, sadly it's not downloadable on YouTube and it's in Russian anyway, we came to conclusion that it all was, and you can actually see there some hand here of uh, some organization from one small island which still considers itself to be important. The whole thing was most likely designed in such a way as to uh, coincide with the breach of the first line of defense of Russian uh, uh, armed forces in uh, Ukraine during this counteroffensive. But if you all know what this counteroffensive turned into, it turned into a complete slaughter of the armed forces of Ukraine, their elite units, their strategic reserve, and of course the slaughter and basically burning of the mo everything that NATO equipped them with. And the idea was that once you breach the first line or maybe even second line of defense of Russian uh, armed forces, you throw in there what is called the uh, units for exploitation of the breach or the breakthrough. And then suddenly you have the mutiny from Wagner Group, which suddenly be becomes what? Huge military political uh, problem for Kremlin. And there you go. And suddenly you can talk, talk about that. Oh, some people will support them. And here comes the issue. If we accept this uh, theory, again, make no mistake, I'm not saying that this is necessarily true, but the probability of this is highly likely, if we'll uh, use the uh, famous Western media uh, lingo, 
then actually the once you really started the uh, ticker once you started the clock which you can cannot turn off this is what happened they just didn't expect that basically uh, armed forces of ukraine will be slaughtered and then suddenly there is no actually the, some kind of the military uh, factor which you can rely upon in order for you to start actually some kind of not just mutiny but uh, coup d'etat and then you send your forces to where some uh, expecting that a general staff will be in disarray and then you know what the uh, public opinion swings in your favor and of course people who thought that they are absolutely amateurs because they do not understand how it all works and you would expect them from, especially considering the fact that uh, those people do not have real good intelligence on Russia at all they all are fed all kind of the B as by all kinds of the shysters and especially the Russian opposition and now you have what Russian society unequivocally dramatic fashion rejected all that it's uh, basically supported the president of Russia Mr. Putin supported the uh, basically political uh, and military top of Russia and as uh, the result as you know that uh, it's actually not Mr. Luk Lukashenko Lukashenko tries to sell himself as very important person he's actually pipsqueak but actually the governor of the Tula uh, region explained to Mr. Prigozhin and his uh, coterie of the psychophants and criminals that if they will continue down this road they will be physically annihilated Russia has more than enough forces and means to deal with this plus those jerks they did shut down the uh, Russian helicopter KA-52 killing the, its crew army will not forgive them for that and then of course once this is uh, this happens as Mr. Prigozhin promised that he will return to their mostly positions in uh, the Donetsk area mostly around Bakhmut and Solidar actually there are a number of camps of the Wagner they will be blocked militarily and then uh, well make your own conclusion what starts procedures which very serious people with grim faces will begin to interrogate people some of the uh, obviously uh, Wagner uh, soldiers will be uh, will not be persecuted they will be probably some units uh, like units of the size of their platoons maybe company incorporated into the armed forces of Russia but the Wagner story is over and one of the reasons actually one of the maybe one of the last straws which broke the camel's back and which precipitated this I mean thing was not just operation which was obviously happening on the part of what is known as GUR on the armed forces of Ukraine and whoever special forces have been behind it but also with the fact that Mr. Prigozhin and his Wagner didn't have their contracts extended by Ministry of Defense and I want to point out to many people to keep this in mind guess how much money they um, got out of uh, uh, his office in Lachta Center in St. Petersburg, for example, that was done by FSB. It is more than 4 billion rubles, and this is uh, just the part of a, a stash. It roughly translates in 64, uh, 60 uh, million dollars, but again, you cannot uh, actually uh, directly convert it because 4 billion rubles is colossal. Uh, sum of money and as precaution himself says we have many such trucks so everything was in preparation FSB reacted but of course there will be now questions to people in Ministry of Defense and primarily uh, main uh, directorate which used to be a guru it's GU now especially people one of the, uh, the deputies of the chief of uh, GU I still use the GRU uh, uh, lingo by old habit and uh, who was signing contract with, with the guy who has actually two convictions including for armed robbery 
That's Mr. Prigozhin. He did 10 years in the prison. Before that, he had another term in, uh, in conviction. So when that's pretty much explains to you that some heads will roll now, including in GRU and the Ministry of Defense. But there are also, and again, this is from my friends and their first-hand uh, knowledge, that there were also political people who they did not necessarily support Wagner, but they were saying that for the last several months, when Prigozhin was increasingly going berserk and preparing this psychological background for what we have today, they were saying like, uh, yeah, let's kind of, you know, try to deal with it uh, right now in a peaceful manner. Maybe we will handle it some way, uh, you know, instead of uh, turning to the hard methods of, you know, clamping, clamping down on this situation with Wagner. Well, they are mistaken now. And as you know, there is a hell to pay when you mis make mistakes on this level with such consequences. And then it goes back to also people who serve in Wagner. And as today, one, one of many, you, you will see a lot of it coming up, the former chief of the analytical service of Wagner Group made his statement when he directly addressed Prigozhin, saying that you are in the wrong, you are committing the crime against the nation. He actually explained that basically, and we knew it all along, Wagner Group is primarily a totalitarian cult. And they never, don't forget, they never gave oath to Russia or Russian Federation. They gave oath to personally Mr. Prigozhin. And that's the whole thing which finally broke through this past have been, you know, they came to head. And in some way, I spoke today with Garland Nixon, I spoke with other people, and it's uh, good that it happened this way. But it is very interesting coincidence with the uh, issue of the, well, as I already stated, defeat of the, this so-called counter-offensive. Now, comes issue, uh, again, of the informational hygiene. I am on the record. Most of what you read in those Telegram channels and from those military correspondents, many of whom who are actually themselves now uh, pretty much criminals or work for Ukrainian side, I mean, it's trash, it's garbage. At some point of time, we will have to touch on the real story of Bakhmut because Wagner didn't perform well there unlike it is stated everywhere. And that was also other issue, not to mention the fact that actually Prigozhin ran, ran into the Wagner because he wanted the old glory. He did it against others. He violated the uh, basically items which are in clauses specifically, uh, basically written in those uh, 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 contract with the Ministry of Defense. So we had the issue with that from the get-go, and I will um, on record also, and uh, I will state it many times. Wagner, and you can read it for, without Russian armed forces, are nothing. They are just absolutely nothing. Everything what they achieved, much of it by very unpleasant losses. It was achieved thanks to the support of Russian artillery, Russian aviation, Russian special forces. And now that this whole thing actually went, uh, went basically became open for the whole world to see, we can say that, yeah, consequences will be severe for all private companies uh, which thought about, you know, just trying to get the glory, which is primarily was exaggerated by the media, including Russian media. But then again, read my lips, I am on record. Almost 90% of those so-called journals and those media personalities, including in Russia, they are whores. They, and of course, none of them understands how the real war is prosecuted. And, uh, what will be their uh, uh, political uh, consequences, and there will be huge political consequences and military conse consequences. Uh, they will be huge, but they will be, most of them will be positive in the long run, because obviously it allows to clean out the re re uh, residue of the fifth and sixth columnists. The sixth column are the so-called patriots. They're not really patriots, as I already stated, 90%, maybe more. 
all those telegram channels and all those you know slotkovs whatever pegovs what have you called stations they are scam of the earth they are actually ideologues many of them obviously having a stake financial stake in all that and spreading all kind of the bs and so there we are today and uh, this is as much as i can tell you today and um once I learn more, what can I say? I will be talking about it. But please, also do not forget to visit my blog. And obviously, it's difficult for me to sit here and uh, translate everything I will be saying in Russian. Because, as you understand, I'm speaking to Russian audience too. But it is what it is, guys. I'm just a, a, a one and lonely man, so to speak, doing this thing. So please uh, don't hesitate to support me and subscribe to my channel. And this is everything I have to say today uh, um, for you. And these are just some points. This is the kind of food for thought. I didn't cover one thousandth of it. What is going on there? Believe me, it is much, much deeper than merely criminal Wagner group going for the uh, armed mutiny. It was also designed to overthrow the government. And this goes much, much deeper. But Mr. Prigozhin, he is a dead man, walking as, though, as are those people who started this thing. And, of course, they now have the blood of Russian soldiers, Russian officers, and army, armed forces will never forgive that. And believe me, that's it for the, those so-called private companies of this nature, and especially with people who are basically 100% uh, uh, confirmed uh, uh, criminals, and Mr. Prigozhin is a criminal. Now, he went from the simple, basically robbery, armed robbery, and actually behavior which is absolutely intolerable, he went into the full-blown Vlasov type uh, mode. He became that uh, state traitor. And that, guys, that is a very serious issue. So this is what I wanted to tell you today. That is why it's much shorter. And just follow the news uh, primarily through uh, reliable uh, media. But as much as I don't like what RT does sometimes, but RT at least gives some news. So and follow this uh, official news, which uh, Ria, Taz, and what have you. They give more or less at least uh, dry information now. So here it is, guys. Have a nice weekend. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.